my awesome audience you're welcome back to my channel my name is Helen now if this is your first time I really appreciate you if this is your second time or you've been with this channel I really appreciate you as well thank you so much Today I'm going to be talking about how to pass the Certified Kubernetes Administrator, that is CKA. So I'm going to be sharing 12 useful tips to help you pass with ease at first sitting. Now if you've written this exam before probably and you did not pass, do not worry because these 12 useful tips, once you apply them, you are good to go. I have a good news to share so a few days ago I sat for my certified Kubernetes administrator exam and I passed <laughs> so that is the reason why I'm here because I want everyone to pass I want you watching this video to make it okay so ensure you stick to the end of this video because the, I'm gonna be showing you around different resources that can help you making some recommendation and these useful tips now if you're ready I'm actually ready and we can get started the Certified Kubernetes Administrator CKA is actually a two-hour online performance-based exam. This exam focuses on testing skills that is required to be a successful Kubernetes Administrator. So I don't know what you've heard about this exam, but I just want you to have this mindset that is not difficult. Okay, so this exam um, is owned by CNCF and um, they've joined hands with Linux Foundation to give you a better Kubernetes ecosystem the CKA certification actually validates an individual's expertise in administering Kubernetes cluster. It assesses practical skills in deploying, managing, and troubleshooting Kubernetes application and infrastructure. There's this common question that people do ask. Is this exam difficult? Well, um, it isn't really difficult like some people think, right? If you spend a lot of time in your cluster, in your lab practicing, and if you've also, you know, gotten some experience in Kubernetes, you won't find this exam difficult, okay? It is not cheap take it from me uh, from my own experience it wasn't really hard okay but uh, like I said it depends on the difficulty of this of this exam can vary depending on your experience with Kubernetes and your familiarity with the topics covered in the exam the CKA exam is designed to assess your practical skills and knowledge in administering Kubernetes clusters now if you have a strong background in Kubernetes and hands-on experience in managing and troubleshooting Kubernetes cluster, um, you might find the exam to be manageable, okay? However, if you're relatively new to Kubernetes or you haven't even done this hands-on, you haven't gotten this hands-on experience with uh, some various components and concepts of, of Kubernetes, the exam can be challenging to you, all right? So, that is the, I think that is the answer to this question, but just take it from me, it is not cheap, you have to work in order to pass this exam. How long should you prepare for CKA? All right, so there's really no specific answer to this question as well, because it depends on your schedule, the study hours, and your experience. And I don't want to tell you that you sit for this exam and in one month you will clear it. I don't also want to tell you um, you will clear the exam in three months because I don't know if you'll be spending like eight hours per day, right? So I'm just gonna give you an um, estimated duration, all right? So, what happened is this if you are on if you, if you don't have experience already using kubernetes all right if you don't have experience using kubernetes in production but at least you've learned kubernetes probably via training i would recommend you study one hour daily so if you have this um maybe busy work uh, schedule you can study one hour daily for three months please this is just an estimated time I'm giving because some people really want to know you can take one hour daily for three months but if you have that flexibility of going for long hours per day then that 
will not really take you off to three months it can take you like a month plus or two months all right so it depends on the hours you're giving per day for this it depends on how consistent you are be consistent i believe that even without your even without having experience as long as you give longer hours in studying you can clear this exam um in two months or even um a month plus all right now if you are experienced i believe one month is is, is enough to clear this exam all right as long as you practice enough and you you make use of the 12 tips i'm about to share with you um you clear this exam in your first sitting what is the pass score for cka for this cka exam a score of 66 percent or above must be earned in order for you to pass now if you've written this exam and you didn't score up to 66 percent you should have uh, seen that you didn't make it so you have to sit so that it can make at least 66 percent or above tip number one get familiar with the curriculum okay so we have this cka curriculum that can help you um you know to get familiar with the topics or the domain that will be covered in this exam so this curriculum is by uh, is from um cncf it will help you to grasp a comprehensive understanding of the topics and concepts you need to master for successful completion of the course all right or the exam here is the official page of the of CKA by CNCF. So if I scroll down now, before I take you straight to the domain, um, the cost for this exam is $395 and you can click here to register for this exam. If you haven't registered, you can actually train for the exam as well. So about this program, you can read more about CKA down here and under this exam details here comes the domain okay so this certification focuses on the skill required to be a successful kubernetes administrator in industry today so these are the general domains and the weight on the exam number one cluster architecture installation and configuration and the weight is 25 percent this means that in this exam this cka you'll be seeing um you know questions that will have up to 25 weight so the questions that come under this domain uh, will definitely have the total of 25 percent um weight or score and the question you have that will come uh, under workload and scheduling will be 15 percent okay so um that will be the total of the question that will come under workload and scheduling is 15 percent you have services and networking and this is 20 percent you have um Questions that will come under storage and they are 10%. Troubleshooting is actually the highest 30%. So you definitely need to hone your troubleshooting skill for this exam. And here comes the second tip. Prepare with the right resources. The recommended course is authored by Monshat Monambat, which I personally use for my own um, CKA preparation. Okay, so this course is available on um, Code Cloud and U Udemy. So you can make uh, you can make use of any platform that works for you. Okay, I personally use Code Cloud, and you know in Code Cloud you have labs and you can have exercises to practice with. It's a great platform and it is highly highly recommended. Please note that the course are not um, free so you definitely need to pay for that I'm gonna be dropping that in the description below so I'll, I'll also you know be showing you other resources you make use of as we write on the tip number three is get familiar with the Kubernetes documentation on the day of your exam believe you me you certainly wouldn't want to begin searching for a deployment manifest file or a pod manifest file you know to um to define your volume and volume mount or start hunting for persistent volumes in various places no you, do, you wouldn't want to waste your time okay so you need to get familiar with um kubernetes documentation know how and where to search to get um keep control sheet sheet know how to search to get volumes services 
and some other uh, manifest file okay so since you have access to documentation that day don't worry you have access to kubernetes documentation they they will place it in your firefox browser so for my for my own experience i use um firefox and i was able to access kubernetes documentation via the firefox browser that was made available to me uh, so you try your best to learn how to use that effectively so before the exam i was able to you know use firefox on just to get to know how to navigate through firefox because i normally use edge right edge is the default browser i use but before the exam i had to use firefox and i navigated through the documentation just to get familiar with that i was also i also mastered how to you know search for any resource i want i know their locations in kubernetes documentation so it wasn't difficult for me to navigate i didn't waste time trying to look for volume or services or volume mounts all right in the documentation uh, in the description below so you can assess it and get familiar with that and the fourth tip is make use of imperative command to create Kubernetes resources and to generate a YAML file. Now, you know, we have imperative command, uh, which is one way of generating uh, yeah, a manifest file uh, as well as creating a Kubernetes resource. Another way is to, is to make use of um, declarative method where you go to your test editor and paste your um, YAML file or your manifest file in order to create a Kubernetes resource. Now, this imperative command can save you a lot of time during exam. For instance, if you're asked to create a deployment um, using the name Nginx deployment with image Nginx, uh, and you should have um, three replicas of pod. Okay. So if you if you want to use imperative command, I have the command listed out here so this is an example of what imperative command so this can easily help you to create this and you won't waste your time instead of you know going to copy the deployment manifest file going to test editor this can actually save your time so this is keep control sheet sheet ensure that you go through this sheet very well and know where um keep control apply is nowhere creating objects commands uh nowhere viewing and finding resources commands are okay so these are all imperative commands and you can use them in your cli you can use them in your cluster okay instead of um so it can help you to edit your resources interact with running ports and nodes delete resources scale your resources and you know different stuffs so you don't necessarily need to know them offhand because uh, I think it's a lot, okay? So you can always come here, but I know for me, I've used this cube control um, sheet sheet a lot, even um, during my trainings and when working, I've, I, I don't need to, if I want to, um, let's say, update my resource, I know it is not at the beginning and I know it's not at the end. So I can easily scroll and come here at the middle to get this um, command. So just get familiar with it and it will save you a lot of time. Number five, I will highly recommend you know Kubernetes resources short names, okay? Knowing Kubernetes resources short names provide a significant advantage in the exam by allowing you to work more efficiently and quickly helping to reduce the need for typing long resource names and enhancing your overall time management during practical tasks okay for instance i don't i don't i can't remember the last time i type deployment like i don't get to type it in full because we have short name which is deploy Take for instance, if I want to uh, view my persistent volume claim, I'll need to type K for keep control, right? K for keep control and then get PVC, okay? And that will get me my PVC. Now, to see all the Kubernetes resources um, short names, run Cube Control API resources in your terminal. This is this. Learn how to use dash dash help option in your Kubernetes cluster terminal. Okay. Um, this actually has different options. For instance, Cube Control run dash dash help. So it depends on the resources or the resource you want to create. 
take for instance you want to create a pod and you've forgotten the, the how the command look like you've forgotten the command to create a pod you can easily type cube control run space dash dash help and that can give you options on the example of how you can make use of you know a command to create your pod this is essential because it allows you to quickly assess a comprehensive list of options and commands available for resource creation, enabling you to make informed decisions and execute precise actions in Kubernetes management tasks. All right. So in your cluster, all you need to do is to run this command and that can quickly give you. But this is not guaranteed. It doesn't really list all the options. So if I run, when I use dash dash help option and I notice that what I'm looking for is not there, I can easily now go to Kubernetes documentation to get that. So you are not promised to see all the examples you need. For instance, during exam, when I was required to use uh, keep control auth, can I get a um, particular resource? I, I wasn't really able to see it in dash dash help option. I had to go to the documentation, you know, to get that, um, to get the full command for myself. All right. Number seven tip, please get familiar with the exam environment before you go and sit for the exam. You'll be writing this exam on a remote desktop. Okay, I personally don't think the UI is great if you ask me, uh, but to have a better experience, um, it is recommended by Linux Foundation that you use at least 15 inches monitor uh, screen for the exam. Okay, else you will have a very small screen to view the question uh, from the left and have the terminal open at the same time on the right. Remember, once you get into the remote desktop environment, your time will start ticking, so you need to be fast about that. Click on the README file, get the link to view your documentation, use the right uh, browser, okay? So open the README file, have access to your Firefox browser and open it, open your Kubernetes documentation and you're ready to start answering the questions. I'm going to be dropping a link. That link contains um, a short YouTube video by CNCF that will, you know, help you to see what the exam environment looks like just for you to get familiar with the exam environment. Tip number eight is manage your time well. Please, this is very, very critical. Uh, the examination actually comprises of 17 questions and with effective time management, it is actually possible to address each query. Please note that some questions might demand more time while others can be completed relatively quickly. Uh, for instance, if you're asked to create a Kubernetes, or oh, sorry, if you're asked to upgrade a Kubernetes cluster and the component, um, it might actually take you um, time, the time can be, you can give more time to such question. Why some questions can be um, to just create a deployment and and um, probably edit the deployment. It might not really take much of your time. So I want us to do a small calculation over here. Okay, so this exam is a two hour exam and is um, 120 minutes. So in 120 minutes, I want you to divide it um, by 17 and you see you will you'll be getting 7.0 um, something, you know, minutes for each question. So if each question can be answered within 7.0 um, minutes, you can actually try to manage that time well. So you don't give more time, although there are actually some questions that will be um, demanding more time than others. For instance, if you're asked to upgrade the Kubernetes cluster and the component, um, you know, that can actually take um, seven minutes or more than seven minutes, depending on how fast you are to answer the question. Why some questions such as to edit a deployment can actually take like two to three minutes. Okay, so um, so for this a uh, question that doesn't really require time. So how I do it is that so if this question takes me like three minutes to complete, it means I still have like four minutes to give to another question that can probably take more than seven minutes. So just ensure you balance everything, ensure you answer all the question, and this time needs to be managed well because I want you to pass. All right, let's see the tip number nine. Get 
test editor skill please know how to navigate in your test editor first of all i make use i make use of vim i'm comfortable using vim sometimes i use vi so this test editor skill include being comfortable with any test editor you're familiar with know how to switch between insert mode and command mode okay understand common commands like um, saving and quitting uh, you need to know how to utilize the navigation shortcuts like using G to move to the last line and using um, GG to move to the first line. All right, so this skill should be sufficient to manage test editing task during your exam. Tip number 10, define aliases for the most frequently used command. So do you make use of alias? Do you know how to make use of alias? It is very important you learn how to make use of alias if you don't know that already. During the CK exam, you are allowed to set custom aliases to make your command line interactions more efficient. This can make you save time. So it depends on your preferences and what command you find most useful. We have some common commands you'll be running during this exam. Like this um, cube control get, you'll be running it a lot. Cube control describe, cube control create, stuff like that. So you may need to, you know, use these aliases to set uh, in your... You may need to set that in your cluster before you start answering questions. Um, some people will just go ahead and also for, from experience, this alias was already set for me during the exam. So I didn't really need to set this particular one. The alias K was to keep control. But others, if you want, you can actually go ahead and set them so that this stuff will be to save your time. All right. Tip number 11, use auto-completion. Cube control auto-completion during the CK exam is highly beneficial because it significantly speed up your command line interactions by providing suggestions and completing commands, flags, resource names, and uh, more as you type. So coming back to this cheat sheet, uh, this cube control cheat sheet, you can see the autocomplete command and you can use this in your, you know, in your bash, okay, to set the auto completion to save your time. And tip number 12, practice, practice and practice. Thorough and diligent preparation is paramount before undertaking this CK exam, all right? So in the re you really need to give it time, you really need to dedicate time to study, okay? Do not rush it. So it's not CK exam, it's not what you just rush because you might rush in and quickly rush out and it might not really be funny, okay? Do you know that once you purchase this CK exam or probably you got it via coupon voucher that you have access to um, a simulator, this CK exam simulator free of charge. Now I'm going to take you to um, killer.sh with a free access and show you how you can actually access that. So this is my dashboard, my profile dashboard at Linux Foundation. Um, so you're seeing certified Kubernetes application developer C card here. I've actually taken my CK exam already, so I don't have access to what I'm about to show you. All right, that is why I signed into C card. So this is what yours will look like. To access the exam simulator, just click on this stuff here, and it will authenticate you. Um, you know to check if you have access so yours will show it is actually similar the ck and simulator is the same interface so all you need to do is to click on this place to activate it all right so just click on this to get it activated i'm going to show you my cka simulator so you have the six hours um free access to this uh, exam simulator right so once you click on that if i click on this um it won't really show me the uh the playground to practice because i've already completed my um i completed the six hours before i wrote the exam all right but once you click on yours to activate it for the first time it will take you straight to the to the terminal where you see some scenario based questions to practice with right now i'm only having um you know just the answers 
the question and the answer all right because i can't have access to the playground so you have to assist hours to practice with all right so ensure you make use of that practice and the sky will be your starting point also be dropping another link for uh, a practice question to practice with because i just want you to practice practice and practice so this clear shell i just showed you actually has um you know difficult questions that are actually more difficult than the real exam question so if you use killer shell i'm pretty sure or you know once you you're able to answer those questions the exam can be easier for you and the exercise file i'll be dropping in the description below as a link ensure you also practice those questions and i believe you make it and you share your testimony ensure you post it on linkedin you can actually connect with me on linkedin so i can see your testimony when you find out pass this exam i really wish you all the best and i can't wait for you to smile thank you so much for watching if you are yet to subscribe can you subscribe to my channel click on notifications so you don't miss out on my subsequent video because i've got a lot to share with you drop a thumbs up for me comment share this video with those that are looking at writing cka and thank you so much i'll see you in my next video bye